The, the survival of our democracy to a large extent depends on what happens um, after um, December, December 7. Yeah. Okay. Whoever takes over the reins of government. Is it after? So on December 7 well, itself, yeah, the choice. Yeah, yeah. Well, whether the choice, we should continue retrogressing well, well, or want to make progress. Well, the choice mm -hmm. and then what happens, you know, afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, if you tell me that you spent $58 million, okay, it appears that you see, a lot of people are poor. So when you talk about $58 million, they don't even understand. Yeah. yeah you, you, they don't even understand what, um, the, the quantum, you know, of monies mm -hmm. um, involved. But you spent all these things and there is nothing to show. Okay. I'm saying that our democracy will not survive if a new administration comes to condone and refuses to do anything, okay, about what has gone on. That's right. People must be punished. Otherwise, I'm telling Ghanaians that our democracy would be short-lived. Some people may be forced to interrupt the system. Yeah. And it's important that we sound this caution to whoever takes over the reins of government. Some people must be punished for causing financial loss to the state. Zabaka, and, and this is a call, in fact, this is one of the demands you made in this report. Yes. Investigation and possible prosecution. Yes. But that bedding of prosecution per the charge report is on the board of trustees. They are supposed mm. to answer for this. And on the matter of the identity of one of them, mm -hmm. The, 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 the media reports at the time when this was released suggested that Shad had cleared Reverend Kusibuati of any matter of possible that's double identity. Mm -hmm. Was that a subject of investigation, first of all, for Shad to get into? Because I know this is a matter that the courts have pronounced upon. Look, there has been, there's been a great deal of propaganda out there. I mean, uh, you have... Kusibuatin, Kwabne Edu Jemfi, and his uh, legal team and uh, uh, PR highlings, totally distorting the Shiraj report and creating the impression that he has been cleared, cleared of double identity and cleared of any um, adverse finding, you know, from this report. When the report itself is clear about the people who ought to be prosecuted, and he's on the board. So, so the, the dichotomy they've created that, oh, you know, the Shiraj report is only others who are in trouble, who are going to face prosecution. But as for Kusib Watin, he's been totally cleared. He's come out squeaky clean. So let's cut through that propaganda. Now, what has created that window of opportunity for the propagandists to go to town? It is this particular statement in the Shiraj report at paragraph 11, page 159, where Shiraj writes, quote, the fourth respondent, Victor Kusibuatin, a.k.a. Kwabne Dujenfi, <laughs> and, 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 and what is even this? <laughs> Official report, Shiraj is writing. Victor Kusibuatin, a.k.a. Kwabne Dujenfi, hmm? does not hold two different passports, each bearing one of his two names with different dates of birth on each document. There is no Victor Kusibuati in the passport database. The fourth respondent has rather been issued four ordinary passports, three of which have expired, and one diplomatic passport under his name, Kwabna Edu Jemfi. Under his name? Yes. Kwabna, Kwabna this is in the yes. report. So, so, well, is, so is this not a confirmation? But, but, but This but is who, rather but, a confirmation. But, but who wrote this, this I mean, particular portion? Yeah, paragraph right. 11, who I mean, wrote it? I mean, Did you, they read it? You, 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 you wonder. <laughs> Look, did they read it? What, what, what sort of English is this? Shocking. No, no just, just read it again. Just, just take your time <laughs> yeah, and read it yeah, again. Because yeah, this, yeah, this last... Yeah, the that, fourth respondent been. rather has been issued four night passports, three of which have, been, have expired, one diplomatic password, under his name, Kwabna Edu Jemfi. Meanwhile, you start the paragraph by I saying say that, that the fourth respondent, Victor Kusibuati, and yet the, pass, the diplomatic passport issued to him 
to carry out his official assignment. Now, this, particular is portion, of the this particular portion is, 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 is contradictory. And very contradictory, very dubious, very sloppy, very shady. And somebody wrote and, this. And very shoddy. The, per the person yeah. went to school. I mean, what we are what doing to our institutions. Now, <laughs> now, now, let me take my time and deal with this double identity matter. I hold in my hands here the incorporation documents of the National Cathedral of Ghana. The National Cathedral of Ghana was incorporated on the 18th of July, 2019. The executive council members, as listed here, those who went to register the National Cathedral of Ghana, the names are here. Charles Gabriel Palmer Bacco. Mm -hmm. The tin is provided. His date of birth is provided, 15 June, 1915. Emmanuel Mate, the tin is provided. The date of death, the uh, date of birth is provided. It's 22nd July 1949. <laughs> it, it does the same for Joseph Isud Anaba, Joyce Roslyn Ai, Most Reverend Justice of Fire Krufi, Nicholas Kwame Duncan Williams. I didn't know his Kwame. You know, in Tiamwa Kingsley Ofosu, Opoku Onyena, Paul Frimpon Manso, Samuel Asanti Enchi, Titus Kofi Awachi Pratt, Godfred Yebu Adami who is secretary to the board. And that's why I'm surprised that Shiraj left his name out. Wow. Then hmm. you have here... The, 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 the position was that he's, he's, he's still... He's not serving as secretary now. Is he? Yes, yes. But as, but, of the time, as of the time... He was. Because there are some board members who, who have resigned, resigned. But their name, mm -hmm. their names in are in, list of in, in the list as provided so, by, so that, by Shiraj. That, that, that's they not the defense that was. in the Japati. Yes, he, yes, I think yes, that's yes, yeah, the same. No, that part and then there's this been one. Instances where okay. in the report there's a recommendation that he should take up the the investigation exactly. into exactly. And, and, prosecute. and prosecute. How do you expect so <laughs> expect him to yeah, you know, so so look, the only way forward to get accountability in this matter is to change this government. Bring really? in the next Mahama NDC government with a fresh attorney general so to deal are, with this matter. To, about, to deal, deal with this matter comprehensively. Because okay. don't expect that this attorney general who is complicit, indicted in this, to take any prosecutorial action on this. Mm -hmm. Now, you have here Victor Kusibati. I'm still reading the official incorporation documents, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I made available to Shraj. If Shiraj says that they didn't go to the Office of the Register of Companies, I made this available to Shiraj. So it's here, Victor Kusibwating, date of birth, 7 September 1971. Mm -hmm. His tin is provided. Mm -hmm. This is how he incorporated the National Cathedral of Ghana in 2019, right. specifically 16th, the date of incorporation, 18th July 2019, date of commencement, 18th July 2019. Okay. Now, the question Shiraj ought to have asked is that how come you incorporate National Cathedral of Ghana as Victor Kusibwatin with date of birth 7 September 1971? Mm -hmm. And when you were being issued with a diplomatic passport to carry out your official assi assignment, mm -hmm. it came in the name Kwabna Edu Jemfi. And in the Kwabna Edu Jemfi diplomatic passport, the date of birth there is 30th December 1969, two years apart. And the Shiraj could not even make an observation that, look, this is criminal, that this cannot be countenanced. And people are running away with it. Look, they will have had a case. They could have claimed that there is some <laughs> clearing, if you like. Mm -hmm. If the passport found in the passport database was in the name Victor Kusibwati, with the same 7 September 1971 date of birth. But the passport Shraj found in the database it's a Kwabna Edu Jemfi database. It is immaterial whether they found two different passports or not. The passport they found is in the name Kwabna Edu Jemfi, another name. Date of birth, different. Is that not criminal? And, 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 and Shiraj just says that, and, and they leave it at that. Now come to page 39 of the Shiraj report. Why I tell you that Shiraj, on the matter of double identity, went on a whitewash mission to give... Uh, Victor Kusibwat in some lease of life because he's been struggling all over the place, losing in court four times, and uh, uh, he's, he's been totally decimated in the courts. So uh, he, they, they tried to probably give him some lease of life. 
with this sloppy. He says he's a powerful man. This. Uh, someone who says yeah, yeah. IG is yeah, yeah. a small yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. He says Dan Paris is a small yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, he says yeah, that. He video. says that. Oh yeah, he yeah, says he that. He says Dan Paris is a small yeah. boy. Yeah. <laughs> small clearly, boy you, you clearly boys. you see his power at play in this in this report. <laughs> oh, yes, you know. Power. What is it? Ah, now, <laughs> don't now, play. Now, <laughs> now let's read page thirty nine and please pay attention to no, this. This is very important. It is noteworthy that the other allegations contained in the complainant's 9th March 2023 letter, which revolved around the fourth respondent allegedly making false statements or declaration in order to obtain two tax identification numbers mm -hmm. in both 2013 and 2016, are matters falling outside the mandate areas of the commission mm -hmm. and thus will not be delved into. Right. This is particularly so because at the relevant time at which the purported acts were allegedly taken, the fourth respondent was not a public officer. The fourth respondent, that's Kusi Boati in Kwabna Edijenfi, only became a public officer in March 2017 when the National Cathedral Board was inaugurated. The commission is, however, mindful of the fact that making false declarations is a criminal offense as provided under Section 248 and 251 mm -hmm. of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960, Act 29, and they, they, they quote it. Then they conclude by saying, accordingly, the commission is making a referral to the Attorney General of this allegation for investigations and necessary action. So, so how can anybody <laughs> say that Kusi Boati has been cleared? I lied on him. I, I should be sued. People that don't read. They, they just don't read. They don't read. Then then page 39. <laughs> page 39 and page 40. Report, the, except that, page except that, except that, look, apart from the fact that people are not reading this report and are in a haste to engage in, in just mindless propaganda, Shraj got it wrong. Shiraj is saying that the double identity conduct, which is criminal, he did it in his private life. So if you're a private person, you can't. So, and, 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 and Shiraj is only interested in investigating public officials. I can understand. Under the law, they deal with public officials yeah. and all of that, mm -hmm. unless those private persons are enmeshed in a public matter. But even that, did Shiraj get it right? No. Kusi Boatin Edu Jemfi is still, as we speak, carrying on with this double identity criminal conduct. I have just read to you the incorporation of the National Cathedral of Ghana as recent as July 2019. He did it, he incorporated, registered National Cathedral. The documents he took there, he took his driver's license, which is in the name Victor Kusibuati. And then is currently holding a diplomatic passport, which I have published, issued to him in 2021 in another name, Kobnoi Dujif, which is valid, valid till 2026. That is it on your screen. And the date of birth, you see it there, 30th December, 1969. Different from the Victor Kusi Boatin date of birth of 7 September, 1971, two years apart. So how could Shraj say that, oh, these are matters he did in his private life before the board was inaugurated in 2017? Shraj got it totally wrong. So it was in Totally wrong. And you see, Shraj has no excuse because I presented them with all the evidence I have here the GRA response to my RTI request, dated 3rd February 2023, signed by Mrs. Florence, that what is Florence Asante. That is it. Where the GRA writing, Honorable Son Okuja to MP North Town Constituent, Ranking Man Foreign Affairs Committee, dear sir, re request for information. This bears reference to your letter dated 25th January 2023, with reference number NTC MP01230002 on the above subject, in which you have provided two distinct taxpayer identification numbers as belonging to the same individual. And you know under Ghanaian law, that's, that's criminal. Person to the relevant provisions of the Right to Information Act and the Revenue Administration Act 2016, Act 915, as amended. We have verified the two distinct taxpayer identification numbers as captured on our total revenue integrated processing system trips and which to respond as follows. One, and they provide the TIN, P002502, I leave out the rest, mm -hmm. is registered for Victor Kusibuatin. The date of birth provided is 7 September 1971. The mother's maiden name is Agnes Atta. Still in the GRA database, they have Kwabna Edu Jemfi with TIN P006272, I leave out the rest. And the date of birth is 30th December 1969. The mother's maiden name is Yajin Fua, a different mother. <laughs> Miraculously, he was born by two mothers, uh, two years two apart. <laughs> this is official GRA response to my RTI. I didn't stop there. I provided the driver's license, which is in the name Victor Kusibuati, still valid as we speak. I also provided 
the Ghana card from the NIA database, which is in the name Kwabena Edujin Fee. Then this is even more damning. I also provided the evidence from the Electoral Commission's database. In the Electoral Commission database, in 2016, he was issued this voter's ID with voter ID number 4863016954. He said he was 40 years in 2016. Voted as Victor Kusibuati. It's here. It's here. I have all the evidence provided this to Shraj. You gave all of this to I gave all of this to Shraj. Then four years later, in 2020, he's issued another voter's ID. This time he says he's 50 years. Within four years, he grew by 10 years. So as for him, every year he grows by two and a half years. So in 2016, the... Voters ID Voter ID at, Victor the, at the age of 40 years. Age of 40 years. And then 2020, four, 2020, years, four years later. Four years later, he says and, he's now 50 years. If a different name, Kwabna Edu Jinfi. It's here. The voter ID, 89070181142. I know what I'm talking about. This is from the Electoral Commission database. All was presented to Shraj. Uh, so, so 26 and 40 years. And this is, and, and when Shiraj says that, oh, this is conduct before he became, this is 2020. 2020, when he had been inaugurated, a member of the National Cathedral Board, has continued. Now, let me come to even the more damning evidence which I presented to Shiraj. Oh. Are you aware that Kusib Watin Kwabna Edu took me to court? after my January 16, 2023 expose, and said that the courts should deal with me, that I have defamed him, have violated his fundamental human rights, mm -hmm. the right to privacy and all of that. Interestingly, interestingly, mm -hmm. he went to court as Kwabna Edu Jinfi, alias Victor Kusibuati. Interestingly, the judgment I'm about to read to you, the official records at the court, Kwabna Edu Jinfi, alias, Victor Kusibuati. When he went to Shraj, Shraj, he said he's Victor Kusibuati, alias Kwabna Edu Jinfi. The Shraj report, the Shraj report which was published, is here. Well, that's public document. <laughs> yes. On you know, interesting. We don't know which one is the name, which one is the alias. So this is what the respected judge said in this matter, in delivering her judgment. Yeah, all of <coughs> <coughs> Her judgment of 13th July 2023. The judge, I'm going to read from paragraph 86, page 30 of the judgment. The judge says, clearly, the evidence before the court overwhelmingly demonstrates that the applicant, who describes himself as Kwabna Edu Jenfi, alias Victor Kusi Boatin, uses two names independent of each other for different purposes and does so concurrently. In the opinion of the court, counsel for the first respondent is justified that's me. Mm -hmm. It's justified when in his statement of case, he argues that the name Vito Kusibuatin, which the supposed applicant refers to as his alias, is not an alias. The name Vito Kusibuatin is actually another identity actively used by the applicant. In the face of such overwhelming evidence, the averment made by the applicant in his supplementary affidavit to the effect that he has been informed by his lawyer and verily believes him to be true that per the laws of Ghana, the fact that a person can be identified by two different sets of names is not a crime, and such a person will not be denied the protection of his fundamental human rights enshrined in the 1922 Constitution by virtue of the fact that he is identified by two different sets of names, unquote, is in the view of the court completely misconceived. Yeah. Completely misconceived. Then the judge continues. This is because the evidence placed before this court does not disclose a simple case of an individual who is identified by two different sets of names, but rather... It discloses a case of an individual who deliberately uses two different identities in his public dealings, either to conceal his true identity, to exploit a loophole in the law, or for whatever reason best known to him, such that but for the revelations made by the first respondent, it will be difficult for any public institution or person dealing with the applicant to relate one identity with the other. <laughs> the evidence before this court discloses a pattern of duplicity and a lack of transparency on the part of the applicant, which borders on criminality. This is the court of Ghana, not me. Which borders on criminality and the failure of applicant's counsel to appreciate the import of his client's conduct and to advise him appropriately is unfortunate, to say the least, 
even Kusi Boati and Kwame Dujin, his lawyers, were criticizing this judge. Well, the judge continues, as mm -hmm. was stated earlier, this court has, has had to painstakingly comb through the totality of the evidence before it in order to decipher the identity of the applicant who commenced this action because of the contention over his true identity. Having established that the applicant who described himself as Kwame Dujin, alias Victor Kusi Boati, operates in two distinct and separate identities concurrently, the question which the question, which of the applicants to identities is the originator of this action, is relevant. As that will enable the court to make specific orders at the end of the case. In other words, the court must know whether the applicant before it is Kobne Edu Jenfi, who was born on 30th December 1969, and whose mother's maiden name is Ya Jenfwa, or Victor Kusi Boatin, who was born on 7 September 1971, two years later, and whose mother's maiden name is Agnes Atta, unquote. It's a judgment. So, so this is the judgment it's of the judgment. court that you... I see. But as lawyer, recent as 13 it, July 2023. His lawyer is also quoted, and this is Bobby Bansing is his lawyer. Yes. Right? He's quoted it saying that there cannot be different facts. At the end of the day, Shraj has come up with their conclusion, their findings of facts, which say that all the allegations made against Governor DJF, Reverend Kusiba, were not supported by the evidence on record. And he believes that the the this settles it, the matter of all the halabaloo that has been made oh, against the personality <laughs> of the prophet. This should bring an end to the matter. How, so how? Is, this, is this legal propaganda? Ah, how, does this, how, how does it, how does it, how does it bring an end to the matter? Did, has Even he read, the has he read the report? The passport they found is not in the name Victor Kusibuati. It's in another name with a different date of death. How does this settle the matter? Oh, oh. How? The, the page 39 and 40, the only mistake Shiraj made is that they say that he did this in his private life. So the attorney general should take it up and prosecute him. How does this settle the matter? How? How does this clean him up? Except that Shiraj ought to have known that he has continued to do that. Even the old evidence before, the, before them. The National Cathedral Incorporation, the name there, Victor Kusi Boateng, 7 September 1971. When he's being issued with a diplomatic passport to go about his official duties, it comes in another name, Kwame Dujenfi, a different date of birth. This is all happening now. And Shwa says that, oh, these are matters that happened in, a, in his private life. So Shwa got the timelines wrong. This was clearly an attempt at whitewashing, a very shabby, a very shady and shoddy one, which in the process, Shwa has dragged its own credibility down with Kusi Boateng, Kwame Dujenfi. And I pity, I pity Shwa. I mean, what, why are they doing this to their reputation? And you have propagandist lawyers saying that they settle. Settles what? Well, how that, how, how does they settle counsel. anything? That's his lawyer. His counsel. It's, 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 it's propaganda. His Treat it with the contempt that, 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 that it deserves. Because you've seen the evidence. You've seen the evidence. Even the Shwaj report. How does the Shwaj report claim? How does it claim? Did Shwaj say that they didn't find another passport in the name, in any other name apart from Vito Kuzibati? No. Shwaj is saying that the passport they found even though in the passport database they found one passport, mm -hmm. that passport is in the name of Kwame mm -hmm. And the date of birth in that passport is 30th December 1969. Different from the incorporation documents where Kusi Boati himself, when he went to register National Cathedral, says that I am Victor Kusi Boati. I was born 7 September 1971. It's here. Together with all the other eminent That's clergy. And Shraj, I mean, couldn't see the clear criminality in this. As the respected high court judge did when Kusi Boati himself dragged me to court. So, look, on the matter of double identity, let Ghanaians get it clear. Kusi Boati in Kwabloji has not been cleared by Shiraj. It's all empty propaganda. Read the Shiraj report. Read page 39, read page 40, read page 159 of the Shiraj report. He's not been cleared. Now, let me quickly deal with the, the, the conflict of interest. And you see, Let's give a quick background. In a minute. Yes. Quickly. Ghanaians ought to know that this whole matter mm -hmm. of Kusi Boatin Kwabnei Jinfi came about when the National Cathedral of Ghana came to Parliament. We asked for a breakdown of how they have used the 339 million. Then they provided a breakdown and said that they have paid 2.6 million to a company called JNS Talent Center Limited, mm -hmm. which they described as contractors mobilization. I then got curious. Because I know that the contractor is Ribadi, as has been confirmed by Shiraj. How come another entity is receiving 2.6 million 
has contracted mobilization. That's how this matter started. So those who are out there say, oh, maybe there's something personal. No, there's nothing personal between Kusi Boati and I. It is because of documents they themselves brought to parliament that we have paid JNS Talent Center 2.6 million. So that triggered my parliamentary oversight. I started investigating. Then I've discovered that, ah, JNS Talent Center Limited belongs to Kwabna Edu Jemfi. He's a director. There are three directors there, Kwabna Edu Jemfi, Johannes Eshen and Sheila Eshen, who are a couple. They are our pastors. And they are respondents to this petition. And they are respondents in this petition. So how come JNS, owned by Kwabna Edu Jemfi, so I decide to dig further to you know, leave the veil. And I found out that, oh, what a shock. Kwabna Edu Jinfi is the same Vito Kusi Boateng. I saw the pictures, I saw the identities, the national IDs, is the same person. That was what then opened this Pandora's box. So I go to Shraj, conflict of interest. Now look, they have told us in parliament that 2.6 million for contractors mobilization. I, okay. I, I, <laughs> the evidence I have, guarded from my investigation does not support that now Shraj is saying in coming <clears throat> in coming to this conclusion Shraj is saying that look we didn't find the paperwork the national cathedral people the <clears throat> kind of uh, corporate governance which they exhibited in this yes. matter is really terrible mm -hmm. and indeed i'm going to read uh, so that people don't say that I am probably adding my own words. Uh, no, the the Shiraj's own we, recommendations. Well, we round up on this matter. Yes, Shiraj's yeah. own recommendations uh, and further observations on this on this uh, matter. And it is important that... Well, uh, if you're looking for that, there's a part that says the informal nature surrounding the processes leading up to the transfer of the money. That's 2.6 million yeah. CDs to the NASA... That's from the National Cathedral to GNS yeah. Talent Limited. Yes. yes. Admin, also demonstrate administrative lapses at such high positions and should not be counting us. Good corporate governance requires that this should have been, it says, You are recorded. right. So reading from page 161. Then um, Shraj also notes that most important, Section 1883 of Act 992 mandates minutes of meetings of directors to be mm -hmm. taken and kept in a book. Yes. Section 1883 provides that a company shall cause minutes of the proceedings of meetings of the directors and a committee of directors to be entered into in a book or books kept for the purpose. On the issue of the absence of minutes, the board chair, uh, Professor mm -hmm. Pokunina, of the National Cathedral stated, quote, Documentations on issues involving the National Cathedral of Ghana and JNS Talent Center Limited from January 2020 to September 2021. Kindly note, it was a normal administrative transaction and, thus, and was thus therefore not recorded in the minutes of the board. It was an offer made by JNS Limited, which right. was paid within a short period. So you have here the National Cathedral saying that this matter of going for a loan from JNS, as they are now claiming, even though they told Parliament that it was contractors' mobilization. Now they say it was a loan they gave to JNS, uh, that JNS had given to them and they were paying back. Yes. Now, there was no board resolution to uh -oh. confirm that. Indeed, Shiraj says that when they asked them, they also added that our modus operandi is that we agree amongst ourselves not to take minutes of directors of meetings. Then Shiraj continues at page 162. This is rather very unfortunate situation and needs to be discouraged. It has the potential to cast doubt in the minds of the ordinary man on the integrity of transactions, and it's a very dangerous practice. The danger of such informality in the handling of affairs is evidence in the situation where the resolution of the fifth respondent, that's JNS company, to transfer the money to the National Cathedral, SB 28, predated the formal request for the money by the third respondent. The resolution to transfer the money to the National Cathedral by the third respondent was passed on 25th August 2021. Whereas, the formal request for the loan by the National Cathedral is dated 26 August 2021, SB 23. Mm -hmm. So, do you get what is going yes. on? The only document Shraj found is a resolution by the JNS board. And even that resolution, it predates the formal request from National Cathedral. So, what is going on here? When they were even cooking the documents, they couldn't even take their time and check the dates. Shiraj is saying that they didn't find board resolution, they didn't find documents. And yet, Shiraj gives them the benefit of the doubt that perhaps it's a loan which they are paying back. 
So when it comes to the aspects to do with Kusi Boat in Kobe BJP and the conflict of interest matter, to be honest with you, Shiraj doesn't cover themselves in glory. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and for people to then be all over the place saying that, creating the impression as if, you know, I didn't have basis to go to Shiraj. When actually, when you read the conclusion of this report, Shiraj states clearly, hmm? let me read it. He says, in conclusion, the complaint is justified in part, my complaint mm -hmm. is justified in part at the end of the investigations. The claim of conflict of interest relating to the four respondents without merit, based on the results of investigation, whilst the allegation of breaches of mandatory procurement provisions under the Public Procurement Act 63, as amended by Act 914, have been justified. I justify those. You see, and then the commission takes the opportunity to express its gratitude to the parties, especially the complainant and his lawyers, for the cooperation extended to the commission during the investigation. So what's all that propaganda out there about? You see, and, and, and you see, it's an interesting point you make then, and Lamati Bebo, I'll bring you briefly on this matter, because one part of the most important aspect of this is what Sonu Kuleto Ablakwa has done mm -hmm. on the issue of now we getting to know what the details mm -hmm. of this issue is. Now the public is aware, based on the Shraj report, 165 pages as we've come through this morning. Mm -hmm. The other important aspect is the uh, implementation or execution of the recommendations. Mm -hmm. Alfred, pardon as, me. As, pardon, as me. Just, by pardon me. Pardon me. Just quickly, ten seconds. Quickly. Just quickly before Martin comes, because this is very, this is very crucial. Quick one. You see, when Shraj also says that Kusi Boati engaged in that conduct, the double identity conduct in his private life, mm? I have other companies which Kusi Boat in Kwabinete Dejinfi has incorporated. And I presented all to Shiraj. Even after he has become a public official. So Shiraj says that he became a public official in 2017 when the board was inaugurated. Look at when he's Victor Kusi Boat, and these are official documents from the Office of Register of Company. When he is operating as Victor Kusi Boat, even after his inauguration in 2017, on 14 January 2019, he incorporated El Dunamis Media Limited. 26 March 2019, he went to incorporate another company on point, on point one, Laundry Limited. 14th May 2021, he incorporated Vibrant Generation Chapel Worldwide, LBG. 20th May 2021, he incorporated Dunamis Chapel Worldwide. Then when he's operating as Kwabinete Edu Jemfi, after 2017, after the inauguration, when he became a public official, on 21st October 2020, he inaugurated the 4Bs company. He registered that. Since November 2020, he registered Annie B's Petroleum Limited. 19 July 2021, he registered Great Speed Engineering and Construction Limited. 9 December 2021, he registered New Wave FM Limited. Mm -hmm. 8 June 2022, he registered another company, Lois General and Risk Limited. 16 January 2023, only last year, he registered Dunamis. Insurance Brokers Limited. He's uh, all over the place, everywhere, no. from petroleum to insurance to radio, no, media. All everywhere. of this, all this. Company. All of this after 2017. No, no. no and so, I presented so all of this to Shiraj. No, so it is not true that it is not accurate that this his double identity thing. He stopped along the way, or when he became a public official, he stopped, and so Shiraj will not go into it. Uh -huh. Shiraj has let this country down. They've they've totally let us down. Look at the overwhelming evidence. No. So there are companies registered in the two names. Yes, in the two names, concurrently. Different dates of birth, different, different things, different mothers. Different mothers. If that one, yes. they kill me. They I mean, yes, yes. Two mothers. <laughs> two mothers. <laughs> two mothers. Two mothers. <laughs> yes. The girls, I, I thought yeah, the girls were saying, see. umami baku. Incredible. That's what mothers, you can only have yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, incredible. Dr. Martin, for the first time, really, listening to all of this, and you say, Forensic audit will be further conducted. But hearing mm. all this, yeah, Dr. Bajina, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yes, Let does me just in mm. any way, and I'm talking about you, concern you that much that action must be taken now? Doc? You know, Alfred, um, it's, it's, it's a great concern. You know, as I listen to all of this, um, especially about um, the man of God, it's, 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 a, it's a huge concern. Um, you know, I know, I know that um, people have local names that are not 
on their birth certificates, especially giving names at birth and naming ceremony. And if you're a Catholic, like um, I, I was baptized a Catholic at St. Maron's mm. Catholic Church and was given a Catholic name, Peter. If you're a Catholic, you have, you have given names and all of that. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a real concern, um, to be honest. And um, I hope, I really hope and pray that um, Prophet Victor Kusibuate would himself bring some clarity to these issues um, so that at least for those of us that are concerned about um, the double identity and the different date of birth. Oh, as for as for, the, as, 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 for as for the different <laughs> mothers, I mean, you know, you know that I mean, you can have a mother who gave birth to you. Obviously, it's one person that can give birth to an individual, but you can have another person who raise you. So those ones, I mean, uh, well, but no, you are stating of official all documents. Of those official documents. Official documents. So, yes, official that's documents. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. No, but, I mean, no, we, 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 your explanation is not to justify that. No, I cannot. Don't try and defend yourself. Official documents. When he was registering this company, yes, that's what I'm saying. So your explanation is it meant to justify this or you're just? So I cannot. I don't speak for Kusi Bwati. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay, that's fine. Right. Right. That, that, exactly. No, 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 no. So, so just stay on. Let, 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 let him hold me hold too. Go ahead. Me too. Yes. We are helping you. No, no, so no, 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 no about um, the names, um, the different dates of birth, and um, the different identities and all of that. So it would be good for him to come out by himself mm -hmm. to help the Ghanaian people, okay, understand these issues very well. Okay. And um, also be able to put it to rest uh, because right. it's, it's, it's a huge concern um, for, 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 for us. Well, and... and Council, I'll come to you on the point about the fact that when someone of the top black class started this, the, the criticism, and even I had that concern, that beyond him putting it on his social media and then publishing it and for the media to talk about it, then what next? There had to be another step of accountability. Yeah. He's taken this matter to charge. Charge mm -hmm. has done the investigations, called all the parties, had them and made recommendations on what has to be done next. Mm -hmm. After we getting to know all this detail, and looking at the actors who have to execute this, does that raise any matter of concern for you to the extent that they are all political appointees who, because this matter is also heavily political, kind of run away from that, that these persons can, can, can carry through or will carry through <laughs> these recommendations by Shraj? So for instance, the Auditor General has been mentioned in this report that there should be some forensic audit conducted. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General has been mentioned in this report as also uh, now the Commission says they further recommend for investigations and possible prosecution of the Board of Trustees mm -hmm. and then also some further investigation by the Attorney General into the matter of Kwabene Du Jenfi and Reverend Kusibu Atin's identity matter. And the Public Procurement Authority as well has been called upon to abrogate this contract that it was void from the beginning, ab initio, to the extent that all the heads of these institutions are supposed to execute this are political appointees. Do you have any concern in there or trust that this will be done anytime soon? With the exception of the OSP, yeah. I have grave concerns, especially when it comes to the office of the, or, or the Auditor General. Yeah. You know, this is the Auditor General that uh, at the beginning of this program, I mentioned that since December 2020, yeah. his promise to find us at 52.5 billion, it's been a mirage. Yeah. Okay? An Auditor General who said he will find us at 52.5 billion since December 2020. Look at that letter. Just a second. Let's go because it helps. Uh, 1st December 2020. To all media houses, re audit service report of 52.5 billion CDs transferred from GCB to unknown sources. Our attention has been drawn to a publication in the social media 
blah 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 concerning our audit observation on transfer of tax receipt by GCB to unknown sources amounting to 52.5 billion. Please let somebody check in 2020 the exchange rate and then we we'll see how much in, in dollars it was. Right? Now it goes on. Whilst we appreciate the public's interest in the audit, we wish to place on record that the audit in reference is a special audit exercise which was requested by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, in a letter dated blah blah August 2020, then based on Article 187, Clause 8. The request included the following. Let, let's, so I just want to go to the most important. So they say, he concludes by saying, in accordance with Article 187 of the 1992 Constitution, we intend surcharging any participating commercial bank who defaults in transferring tax receipts collected from various transit accounts into the respective BOG holding accounts. Once again, we wish to assure the public that, as usual, we shall submit the audit report to Parliament when the exercise is completed. Okay? Signed, George Swansea Winfrey, Dep Deputy Auditor General for the Auditor General. That's 1st December 2020. Auditor General is looking for 52.5 billion from GCB to unknown sources. This has not been done. All because we know the clearing agent, Ekufuado, is at work. He will not allow the Auditor General to do that work. So for now, I don't have hope in the Auditor General being able to do any better forensic audit. The only time that we will get that hope is if we make sure that Baumia is not elected to serve a third term for Ikufuado. Just remember, a vote for Baumia is a third term for Ikufuado. So if you want to find your 52.5 billion, if you want to find the details of the cathedral money, how it's been spent, okay, then it means that make sure that Baumia doesn't become president. Because if Baumia is president, that is Ikufuado's third term. You will never get justice. You won't. Forget it. Forget yeah. it. Clearing agent. Ah, what are you talking about? Clearing right. agents still at work. So that is it on the okay. Auditor General. Now let's come to OSP. Now, the Shraj report. If you are referring something to OSP, just say I'm referring to OSP. Then in that same report, they say they don't find corruption. Ah, Shraj, do you have a mandate to investigate criminal corruption? I mean, why was Shraj running ahead of himself? Yeah. You only do administrative corruption. You don't have a mandate to investigate criminal corruption. So what was that statement in there? Uh, look at the, please, yeah. can you give me the page? That you don't find corruption. How? Have you investigated corruption? Did you take a caution statement? When the uh, OSP is going to investigate corruption, they take caution statement, etc. Did you caution this, uh, what do you call it, trustees? Did you caution Kusi Bwati and Co? So how do you say you don't find evidence of corruption? Then the next line, you go and say, uh, this is your, but you suspect corruption. I'm all over the place, wobbling all over. All over the place. Yes. Okay. Look at it. It says this. Yeah. Although, look, it says, that's page 137. Although the commission has not found any element of corruption in this case, the extent of the breaches raises reasonable suspicion of corruption. You say, although the commission has not found any element of corruption, Shraj, do you have a mandate to investigate criminal corruption? No. Do you have a mandate? So what are you writing? No, this whole report, it's all over the place. You don't have a mandate. You've not cautioned them. You weren't doing a criminal investigation. So what is this thing? You have not found any element of corruption. How? How? All right. So you see that Shraj itself, now they need training because look, this is not the first time. Other Shraj reports, when they say corrupt, you see, when it comes to conflict of interest, it's not only actual, but even the optics, when it is apparent, yet you find Shraj come and say, oh, we don't find anything. Then you're like, ah, does Shraj really understand conflict of interest? Shraj, I'm telling you, we need to read to Shraj. Me, this kind of report okay. is wishy-washy. Oh, I'm not done. Yes, I thought, right. that's oh, it. So yes, so the point is that, listen, 
Shiraj, you don't have a mandate to do criminal investigations. Don't write like this. Just say, oh, we suspect they may be. And then so we are referring to OSP. Yes, you are allowed to say you have a reasonable suspicion. But you don't start by saying you have not found. What did you investigate? You didn't investigate criminal corruption. So how will you say you have not found? Okay, so I mean, this bad writing, waste of a taxpayer's money. Yeah, you come and write because when you do this, you think Kusi uh, Bwati and the rest, Nyansafuwe uh, Muwahi, when they get lawyers, they think their lawyers will not come to court with this and say, oh, Bashraj even looked at it and said they didn't find any element. Well, why would Shiraj do such a poor job? Very poor job. I mean, come on. Right. So, listen, this thing, like I said, the key to it is that to get to the bottom of this matter, make sure that you don't give a Kufuado any third term. Don't give a Kufuado a third term through his surrogate, Baumia. Otherwise, we are finished. We are finished. Now, we showed you the current state of affairs. And uh, uh, Professor Jampo, I'm going to round up on, with you on this matter because we're getting to the Electoral Commission, and that's our next issue. Uh, so, Dr. Tobolako will, will have a quick take on this before he leaves us because he has to also go and attend to other equally important matters. But in the end, Accountability is key in this matter. That is an other end result of what Samalokudo to Bulaka has done, beyond we getting to know. How can this be exacted? Well, I said earlier that um, for now, uh, there is no hope that um, we can even um, execute the recommendations of, of, of the stretch. Um But I have every belief and confidence um, that whoever takes over the reins of power after our upcoming elections would want to act um, to ensure that there is accountability. Indeed, we would not keep our mouths shut. Okay. We would push um, that the right thing is done. You see, the whole idea of constructing a national cathedral by President Akufuadu, in my view, was and was a calculated attempt at deceiving some men of God just for the purposes of rallying them behind his bid to be um, uh, elected as president. And it was also, in my view, a very misplaced priority that clearly shows that he does not even have a full grasp of what the real issues are that Ghanaians are looking for. He doesn't really have a full grasp of what really would uplift us from the quagmires of, of poverty and underdevelopment. He doesn't have that grasp. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's okay. He's done his bit. He's a goner. We've spent $58 million in digging a hole. Um, let's see what happens you know, after, af after him. And like I said, we would demand accountability. And I'm um, arguing again, making the point that our fourth republic will be short-lived if some of these infraction, uh, infractions, if some of these um, things that have happened are not addressed head on. If we don't see, if, if we don't see by the, by the comportment, by the actions of, of whoever takes over that they, they feel that, look, these have not been done right, and so the right thing must be done. If these things don't, if, if, if you don't see these things happening, then I'm sorry, but um, um, our fourth republic will be short-lived. And so let's, let this be known. Those who are to be charged for causing financial loss to the state, let the law take its course and let everybody be, be made aware that when you get into the public space to serve, mm -hmm. yours is to serve the interests of, of, of Ghanaians. Right. President Akufuado said that if people were looking um, forward to making quick money, it was not going to be made, um, it was not going to be happening in this administration. But we have people who are serving as board of trustees, being paid huge sums of money, and when no work is being done. And even when people, some revenue ministers were resigning, others, others felt that, well, to the extent that it's free money for us, let us, let us, if you are lying down and then they are pouring honey into your mouth, you will not spit it out, you will swallow it. But you see, they should be made yeah. to vomit the honey.
that they have swallowed when power changes hands. And whether we like it or not, power will change hands. Whether it is going to be breaking the eight or resetting Ghana, power will change hands. And I expect that the right thing is done. As for President Akufuado, he's a monumental disappointment to Ghanaians and he's a goner. He's he's part it. And I don't know, the worst president in Ghana's fourth republic. The worst but, president in the, I mean, everything. Look at all the indicators. How? How? Look at all the indicators. How? The worst president in Ghana's, Ghana's fourth republic. And, and, well, and, 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 and it hurts John me. Rollins. Yes, Jerry, 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 Mills. there was John, John there was Jerry Mills. Mills. There was Nana President Kufu Wallace, Kufu. there was Jay Kufu. Nana Nana Kufu. Kufu. Yes, you look at all West. these people. Put them say, how would you rank him? Is there, is there, is there is the West president? Oh, yeah, oh, 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 but okay, what, what, what let's. Like skill gentlemen, like gentlemen, ah. it's 20. Look at all the indicators. Look at all the indicators. Look at governance. Look at corruption. Look at corruption. Gentlemen, gentlemen, stand captured. Economic mismanagement. Economy. Okay, democracy. Okay, you the know it. You have some perception in this. Yes. Yeah. You're a professor. You know perception. As a check, as a check. You know perception. Yes, as a check, the CPS. That's how we use it. That's 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 that Thank has you. always been there. Hold on. He said we should be better. Ghanaians should be better. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are, 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 you